this video lecture we are going to see the next example example number three for method of sections in this example if you see i've got a truss over here now there is no value the given for the force acting in this truss we need to calculate that value the question says that the maximum allowable force be it tension or compression acting in the members ab af and gf that is ab af and gf should not exceed 2.5 kilonewtons so in that case i need to find out the maximum load p on the truss so what i need to do i need to first make the section plane how to make the section plane we have seen that in the previous two examples whenever we make a section plane the section plane should cut the truss into two parts that is the first thing that we have to do then we have to cut the truss in such a way that i'm not i'm not cutting more than three members in a rare case in a special case we will see we have we, we might have to cut four members now in this i can cut the truss with this cutting plane such that i'm dividing the truss into two parts now what happens over here we need to find out the force p so the first thing that we need to do is we need to check for the stability criteria we'll calculate the number of members Now we will calculate the number of joints. We can see that right hand side is same as the left hand side that is number of members as 11. So I can say that this is a perfectly stable truss. After doing the stability criteria check, we need to find out the support reactions. Now, when I'm applying the conditions of equilibrium in this example, I need to first draw the FBD for this. So, when I remove this hinge support, I'll be having two support reactions for hinge. One is the horizontal reaction and one is the vertical reaction. Now, for the roller support that I'm having over here, one reaction which will be perpendicular to the surface. In this case, it will be horizontal reaction. I don't have any horizontal force acting in this case, but I'm having one vertical force acting. HA plus HG, since I'm not having any horizontal force, only two reaction forces, so I'll be writing the equation as HA plus HG equal to zero. Now, I'm getting the reaction at A as minus P. So whatever the force I'll be putting up by calculation in the truss, I'll be having the reaction force at A, the vertical reaction force. Now, 
what i'll be doing is i'll be taking moment about point a when i'm taking moment about point a the horizontal reaction force and the vertical reaction force they won't create any moment the moment by point the force p acting at point d will be a clockwise moment whereas the moment by force hg will be anti clockwise we know the distances for both the forces this distance will be 4.5 and this distance will be 2.6 i have got the force the reaction force at g horizontal reaction force that happens to be 1.73 times of the applied force p now similarly i can write h a ka value and that will be a negative value okay so i have calculated the support reactions the next step that i need to do is i need to draw the part of the truss which i'll be considering for the further calculations Okay, students. Now what I have done is I have drawn the right side part of the truss. Now you would be wondering why I have drawn the right side part because in the previous two examples I was saying take the part of the truss which is smaller and that is easier for the calculations. But in this case I have taken the right side part of the truss. And the, what is the reason for that? The basic reason for that would be I have the force P, which is unknown force. on the right side part of the truss and i need to calculate that so whenever i'll be taking the moment about any point in this truss in this part of the truss i will be considering that point p as well if i take just the left hand side part of the truss what happens in that case i will be ignoring the force p which is acting on the truss but i don't want that so that is the reason i am taking the right hand side part of the truss now what i'll be doing is i'll be taking moment about point f that will be my first step if i take moment about point f in method of sections the force f2 and f3 they are not going to create any kind of moment in this step so i can find out the force f1 easily now what i am doing is with respect to point f i am taking moment of this force f1 and this force p so this force p i know the distance that is 3 meters but i don't know this height that is the bf length so for that i'll have to do some calculations to find out height bf in this triangle bfb I got the height for BF as 1.732 meters. So now I can put that value in this equation. So I got the value for F1 in terms of P as 1.732 times of P. 
Now, I'll move on to the next joint. Say, if I take joint F or better, if I take some other joint because I need to find out the forces F2 and F3. So, I'll be moving on to joint A. That is this. If I move on to joint A, what happens in that case? The force F1 and F2, they will be passing through the moment center. And the forces passing through the moment center will create a zero moment. So, I can find out the moment for uh, the force F3. So, what I need to do for that force? I need to resolve the force F3 at point F itself. So, for that, I need this angle alpha. To find out this angle alpha, or the better example would be, if I take this force acting at this point, this point being G. If I resolve it at point G, this component is not going to create any moment. So that would be an easier calculation for me. Now, to find out angle alpha, what I need? I need to find out this length and this length. This length I already have. That happens to be 1.5 meters. I will need to calculate this length. This length would be the total length minus the BF length that we have just calculated. I got the angle as 29.82 degrees which actually should be 30 degrees because this line itself is the 30 degree line which is line GD. So I can directly take this angle as 30 degrees. So I'll move on to joint F A right now and take moment about joint A. So if I'm taking moment about joint A, I need to find out this forces, the moment basically. I'm getting the value as minus 2P. So F3 is coming out as 2P. Now what I'll do is I'll move on to the next joint Suppose if I take moment about D, so I can find out the force F2. What I will be doing is I'll resolve this F2 at A. Now, what I was doing is I need to take moment about joint A. So, I've taken moment about joint A. I got the force 3 as minus 2p. Now, if I move on to joint D, Now, when I'm taking moment about point D for this force F2, this force F2, I have resolved it over here. So this component becomes F2 cos theta and this component becomes F2 sin theta. The force F3, since it is passing through the moment center D, it won't have any moment. Force F1, even that is passing through the moment center, so if that won't have any moment. And this force P, even that is passing through the moment center, D. So even that is not going to have any moment. So I just need to calculate this now. So if you can see that I'm getting the value for F2 as 0. Which means that 
द फोर्स इन मेंबर एफ टू और द सो कॉल्ड मेंबर ए एफ will be a zero force member we have seen that by observation we can easily find out the forces of the zero force members or the equal forces members now by observation again i can just show you if i go to joint c at joint c bc and cd are linear forces so ce will be a zero force member at joint e EF and ED are collinear forces. This has become a zero force member. So this will become a zero force member now. If I move on to join B, AB and BC are collinear forces. BE has become a zero force member. So now BF will become a zero force member. If I move on to joint F now, FG and EF are collinear forces. So the forces in both the members will be same, whereas BF has become a zero force member. So F2 will become a zero force member. So that is the reason we have got the answer for F2 as zero. So we can say that by calculation or by observation, the special case is true. So we can directly say that the force in member AF is a zero force member. Now, we need to find out the value for P. The calculations that we have done over here, I'm getting that F1 is 1.732 times of P and F3 as twice of P. Now, the question says that what is the maximum load P I can apply on the truss? So, the maximum load P that I can apply on the truss would be that of twice P. And now, it also says that it should not exceed 2.5 kilonewtons. So, if I just substitute 2.5 kilonewtons for F3, I can find out the value for P. So, you have seen that how you have to do this kind of examples wherein the force acting on the truss is not given to you. But by using method of sections, we have calculated the force acting on the truss provided, provided that the force in some of the members is known to you. Like in this case, the force acting in the members AB, AF and GF. As per the question, it should not exceed 2.5 kilonewtons. But by calculation also, we have seen that the force in member AF is coming out as a zero force member. So the forces acting in member GF and AB should not exceed 2.5 kilonewtons. So by calculations, we have seen that P is coming out as 1.25 kilonewtons. Hope I have explained this sum very nicely to you. Thank you.